Hi everyone, this is Freddy Martinez and this is my flip video lesson. And this lesson is titled Muscles Part 3, Motor Mechanisms, and we'll be talking about the sliding filament model. Throughout this lesson, if you should feel you need to pause the video, please do so. This video contains a lot of images and illustrations, so it is recommended that you do so. This lesson will include the following terms, which we have covered in class and we may define as we progress through the lesson. Feel free to pause here and have a look over them before we move on. In the previous lessons from this unit, we've talked about receptor types and functions. We've also covered muscle types and functions. In this lesson, we will dive into how muscle cells contract. Here we have the breakdown of muscle tissue. We can see here that the, the fascia goes into the fascicles, and the fascicle is broken down into muscle fibers or muscle cell. The muscle cells are broken down even further into myofibril, which is what we'll be talking about today. On the left side here, you can see where the muscle cell is, and on this arrow here is drawn to show you how in the other illustration on the right side, this here is the muscle cell, the same muscle cell. You can tell it is a muscle cell because of the nuclei that you find on the muscle cell labeled here. The same nuclei are on the cell on the right side. When you want a muscle to contract, your brain sends a signal to the neurons that are connected to the muscle cells. The muscle cell here receives a signal from the neuron, which sends an action potential down the sarcolemma. The action potential reaches here, the, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which releases calcium through calcium channels. The calcium that is released uh, is used for one of the functions of the sliding filament model of contraction which we'll go into next. Please pause the video here and take a minute to look over the diagram. Here we continue the, from the previous diagram. And these are the two structures here we'll be talking about, the actin and the myosin. Together, these form the sliding filament model of contraction. As we go on, please ignore the shift in colors because the images of, are from multiple online sources. Instead, focus on the, the shape of each structure. On the right side here, we have a visual representation of the actin and myosin filaments in a more simplistic form. Both are common representations of the sliding filament model. Both are common visual, visual representations of actin and myosin. Actin and myosin are used for the contraction of muscle cells. You can see here in the top that this is a relaxed state, and the bottom here is in the contraction state. In muscle cells, the actin and myosin are arranged in sarcomeres which are separated by the Z lines shown here. The Z lines are just uh, thin filaments that are arranged differently than the filament that interact with the myosin. The cycle here is what we'll be focusing on. We'll go through, through step by step, and then we'll come back and look at the entire cycle as a whole after we've identified each part. First, let's go over the actin filament, also known as the thin filament. The actin filament are composed of actin, tropomyosin, and the troponin complex, which are all proteins with different functions. The tropomyosin is a regulatory protein 
that prevents myosin from binding to the to the actin by covering the myosin binding sites, which are those small dark circles underneath this structure here. The, the actin, or the thin filament, is what interacts with the calcium ions that we were that we talked about earlier. The troponin complex serves as a receptor for the calcium ions. Once the calcium binds to the troponin complex, it causes a change in shape or a shift in the orientation, which moves the tropomyosin along with it, and thereby exposing the myosin binding sites. In this state, the actin is ready for binding with myosin. We'll stop here with the actin filament and we'll continue with the myosin filament in the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on the classroom website or contact me directly. Additionally, you could also bring them into the classroom for class discussion. Thank you for watching.